inside of the skull. And to do that, I removed the top. And I want to show a little bit about the top first. You can see the interior part of the frontal bone, as well as the two parietal bones, and part of the occipital bone here. That's sort of the top-down view of the floor of the skull is what we're interested in next. Here again, you can see the inside of the occipital bone. You can see the foramen magnum here. You can also see the petrous part of the temporal bone as well. Those are these rocky ridges. They look like little mountain ridges. That is the petrous part of the temporal bone. Remember the external acoustic meatus. Well, if you follow that on through, it comes out to the internal acoustic meatus. If you look directly below the internal acoustic meatus, you can actually see the jugular foramen from the inside. Another feature of the temporal bone we mentioned before was the squamous part. You can see that on the inside. It's sort of the thin part. And then let's, let's next look at the sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone is this bone right here. Kind of looks like a bat wing. Some people will say it's kind of a bat wing shape. In fact, we can divide the sphenoid bone into two sort of major features, the greater wing and the lesser wing. And the lesser wing is this part right here. Now right in the center of this thing is the cella tersica, so named because it looks like a Turkish saddle. And if you look at it, indeed, it looks like a saddle. Now two features that we can see sort of between the lesser wing and the Turkish saddle is what we call the optic canal. And this is where the optic nerve comes through. And if you look, you can see where it goes. Now I'm going to turn the skull around a little bit from the front. And you can look into the orbits of the eyes. And you see kind of this X shape here. The two of them together would make an X shape. The lower arms of this X shape are the inferior orbital fissure. And the upper arms would be the superior orbital fissure. Next, let's look at the ethmoid bone. Now, the ethmoid bone we see best from the inside of the skull. And there are two features of the ethmoid bone that you need to know. This flat part here that's slightly perforated, this is called the cribriform plate. This part here, labeled 58 in the model, is called the crystagalli. And you can see here, sort of where I've tried to delineate it a little bit darker, the border's a little bit darker, of this bone and the features of it, both the sphenoid bone and the ethmoid bone. 